Hello, everybody. This is Rich from the Metal Cell Podcast. I'm delighted to welcome Adam and Daryl from Archives to the show. How are you, lads? Yo, how are you doing? Thanks a million for joining us. Do <laughs> <laughs> right. okay. You're glad to be on the show. All right. Yeah, no yeah. Problem. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, my wonderful co host, Evan. How are you, man? Good, man. Good. Still Good. going. Yeah. So, um, congratulations, first of all, on a fucking fantastic debut release, uh, DK. Um, blew me away. Uh, Evan tipped me off about you, in fairness. So, uh, how did you come across him, Ev? I'd say it was just Instagram, I think. Um, yeah. I think it was through Worn Out. I think we were just kind of talking through that and then checked you out. And I think it was like, what I loved the most was the fact that it's a brand new band that like skipped the shitty growing stages. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, th- I think he did it right where it wasn't just like, here's some shitty demos. And then all of a sudden there's a jump. Do you know, it, you seem like you kind of went in with like intent you yeah. know exactly what you were doing. You had everything kind of down to get over the te- teething stages. So second I saw that straight away, I was like, right, I'm going to keep an eye on these guys. And the stuff that you've put out so far is fucking sick. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Thanks um, very much. I just like it. Yeah, give us the background to the band, lads. Right. Yeah. Well, um, we had all sort of played before in different bands and stuff. We all knew each other for years. Okay. So in that sense, we'd kind of done the thing before where, you know, we'd release shitty demos and done mm. all that kind of stuff. Um, and basically, during the first lockdown, we more or less sort of were talking back and forward about maybe doing something, just because everyone's sitting inside and you feel like you want to do something anyway. Yeah. So just sort of start writing remotely that way. And <clears throat> Well, we had four songs, didn't we? Well, uh, talking about an EP, and me and lead guitar player, Stuarty, says, fuck it, well, we'll go for an album. And really put everything in this year with lockdown and mm. just put our and it like and it's exactly what we've done in the end well, we're going to try every 14 songs dwindle it down the the oh, 10 geez. yeah just we could have kept going not he wanted 14 like but yeah just thought 10 <laughs> was a bit short for an album thought we needed a bit more <laughs> fucking hell but, <clears throat> and uh name, name out a few bands you were in right i was an ic playing with Stuart and saul and we've done okay. that for years Thing. uh i was in like to be honest lots of like shitty bands when i was younger i was in like all the King's Ashes, stuff like that. Uh, more recently, I was briefly in Embrace Execution um, and a couple other projects and stuff that didn't really do much, you know, but yeah. I've done drums and survivalist, and yeah. then Stuart and Saul haven't done much, no, it's just been I see whatever, whatever we have done, yeah. Oh, minimalist so. as well, we did minimalist together. That's, yeah. that's it, but nothing really, you know, that's, we're trying to put more into this project. And yeah. what kind of styles were they? I know survivalists, they're fucking outstanding. Shout out to the lads there. Um, Great band, Jim. Great they, band. They have another, they're going to be releasing in January or February, I'd say, at this stage. Uh, survivalists support the Born Out, actually, in Belfast. That was yes. my first time seeing them. So you were yeah, drumming with them for a while, Daryl. What's that? You were drumming with them for a while, is it? Yes, I think all the stuff they have out now, I think I drummed all of it. No way, Jesus. All okay. of it. I think the only thing that was changed was the last the song. The the band in and the change of drumming on that song. That was it. So, yeah, I was in them for about a year. Wow, oh. Jesus. Excellent stuff, man. Um, oh. And When you're saying as well that you were, you know, writing things remotely for the initial stage, initial stages of it, how many songs did you have before even stepping in the room to be able to, to play? Because... I, I remember hearing that you, you had written things and it was like, right, was it a case of you had an album and then no, going in no, to try no, play it or what way was it? This process is why I love writing with Stuart. We had four songs then that we'd like practice in the room. And uh, Mainfield was the last one, I think, wasn't it? Which we did. I think so, yeah. We recorded it first, thinking, right, banger, let's go. Then Eulogy was the next track. So Jesus. it was track five. Was it? Yeah, yeah, track five. And that's where we're like, right, we're sh- fucking serious. Well, we think there's a good sound here. That's mm. fucking for the album. So we walked in with four songs and came out with ten in about a three or four month period. Yeah. So it was very quick turnaround. Yeah, we started tracking yeah. in January and I think we're finished. Say about May ten. Yeah. So yeah. And what about fact. Paul? Where where did Paul come from? What band Rick, is he? Paul, this is Paul's first ever band. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it is. So we, we got him online basically. He wasn't actually too much involved in the tracking. He wasn't about then, so he's came along now and 
slotted them pretty well, hasn't it? Yeah. Whenever we first started recording the album and stuff, we had uh, we actually had three guitarists and a yeah. bassist, <laughs> but we just kind of I don't know it didn't work. It didn't work, you know. Mm. It's too I don't know. Too, too many, much, like, too many egos. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's too much. But, you know, you got to go. Dudes. Dudes. You got to go. What, what works? <laughs> yeah, I think w- w- once there's a flow, it's you know it's hard not to stick with what actually works, especially the early stages of a band where there's going to be such an influx of, of writing and everything's everyone's going to try to get their part in in some way so it's, I think it's a very crucial time You were getting two sets of songs maybe and uh, they were saying a bit different you know so mm. you went up there and go well that's good as you say so that's what we do yeah. you know And Adam have you been a singer the whole time do you play other instruments? Uh, I mean most bands I've been in I've been playing bass to be honest like really cool I've done a lot okay. of backup vocals like the odd screams and stuff and singing and that but yeah uh, I guess be, I always wanted to just be a vocalist because I'm pretty much like mediocre at everything else so <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's like, the obvious thing I wanted to do you know so I'm finally kind of getting to do that you know yeah so, they, they have a lovely balance right through the album Edmund of the clean vocals and Adam's vocals as well like haven't they yeah, it, that's I always find when it comes to the heavier stuff as well, that can be so hit and miss. And like I won't even yeah. pretend it's not like um some bands might do just one or just the other, but when you're mixing them, it really does have to be done right before that because it can so easily come across like very cringy, you know. But yeah, like you got 100%. that you got that perfect balance and I feel like you were conscious of that, almost like knowing where Massive. was the right pipe to, to put in because, you know, just, just because a, a vocalist can sing doesn't mean he has to every time. Like, oh, you know? we, so we like cleans well. I'm not actually a massive fan myself, to be honest with you. So <laughs> we've always sort of thought the, like a hook as opposed to yeah. a yeah, whole yeah. and keep the screaming going like fuck, you know, keep it metal. <laughs> mm. Yeah, because yeah. I think if you put too much like clean vocals in, like there's like I think you can be pigeon- you can like pigeonhole yourselves nearly by doing too much of that kind of thing, you know. And yeah, like, for, and for both of you, I mean, like Daryl, your drumming right throughout this album is fucking stand out, absolutely brilliant. Now it's yeah, there's nothing it's better true. than a, a fucking drummer that's propelling a whole album along, and and it's a great example, man. So congrats on that. Thank you very much, brother. Appreciate that. Uh, what you like Ev for being your drummer yourself like it was actually one of the first things that kind of stood out to me you know Mm. um because i remember i remember seeing that you know you had kind of written things remotely and then in my in my head i'm like right okay how much of this that's why i wanted to know like how much was written remotely before going in or because Uh, yeah because i saw some of the videos that i saw from was it voodoo that you were in uh, recently yeah. there yeah 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 because I saw a few of those um, you know like just even little shitty Instagram videos or whatever but I was very much just being like right is this going to be a watered down version of the tracks but not at all everything just sounded tight as fuck mm. thank you very much but I appreciate it are you asking me remotely how I wrote the drumming are you or at the well even or? like do you know it's kind of one of those things when you hear remotely it's it's that thing that I'm kind of like right they did just program everything and then just try no, to do no, a watered uh, down version live or no drum ways. I'll, I'll be honest with you. And you can back us up here. It was, I don't know how to describe it. It's like Stuart would have came with you with a riff for a song on a Thursday and says, do you want to track the song? And I, eh? <laughs> the last yeah, song on that way. And then that, Im- that immediacy know, works as well. Like just being you able know what? to, I like the track that way, but it was really good this time to see any other time I've done stuff. I've had an idea of what I wanted to do. And that, you can see that in the first four songs, but you were able to break it down riff by riff and really get into what the fuck you wanted to do, if that made sense. You know, yeah, definitely, you definitely. Play the drums down, and it really brought the most out of it for me, anyway. Mm. Okay, let's listen to uh first track here. It's uh, Eulogy, and it's uh, your second single, isn't it, lads? Yeah, it's yeah. the second one. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
class. That's the perfect example there of the balance and the brutality and the melody, the hooks. Yeah, definitely. There's some some opening track, lads. Uh, so Thanks what made up. what made you choose, uh, as I call him, the magician, Josh? Is an obvious Josh, Josh. choice. If you want a track that style of music, he off the go to. Yeah, we've known him for years, but you know. You it's know. it's easy for us to go to Josh because like I I was tracking personally myself I was tracking music with Josh when he was learning how to record in his his mom's garage when I was like fourteen and oh, so yeah. it's <laughs> so yeah. personally I just feel comfortable in his environment you know because it's not. what did that feel like Adam just watching him just get like fucking more successful man he's so talented man. yeah he's great at what he does yeah he's great. Brilliant, like it's good. It's really good to see him sort of coming on. And, you know, he, I mean, he's one of those people you could always, you always knew he would sort of go that way, you know, because he was such like a quick learner even back then. You know, he's constantly just like taking in information and figuring stuff out, you know. Mm. But it's very interesting because he's, he's self-taught completely, like, and that's I respect, admire that a lot about him, you know. Yeah. And who's he got? Did you do? To... Sorry, well, go on. Uh, did you do much? Were you listening to it on kind of like? Did you do much vocals when you were playing bass and other bands at all? I did a bit, yeah. Um, I, I like did the odd bit of like singing a chorus and that, but I did the odd tiny bit of screaming. So I've kind of yeah. done it a bit, like yeah. Because I'm just imagining if I was someone that was in a band with you and just being like, didn't fucking utilize that enough at all. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, in previous bands, like yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just being like, right, maybe, maybe we should have let him do that part. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, get in another bass player, and yeah. um, like, Daryl, for yourself, uh, a joy working with Josh. Oh, I love working with him. He loves, he loves the drumming and sax, and we, yeah, we get on very well. Do you know what? He's he's a big part of that album. You know, he's he is, yeah. he's great to work with as a producer. Uh, he brings the best out in you as you're doing things. You know. Uh, I could be wrong, but does memory serve me right? Did he do some drumming for Survivalist as well? He, he did. He took over from me when I came to do this. Yeah, and is he still with oh, him? I remember him just... posted it. No, no, no. no. Yeah. He, oh, he's not with him. He actually I had tracked that song and then they brought him in and he retracked it himself. I think he done, he planned to do a gig and I don't know who the new guy is now. So no, yeah. he's, he's just strictly producing and that's it. Yeah, because I, I, I was wondering, I didn't have a ch chance to, to talk to Gav because I knew they had a drummer in, obviously, when they supported Worn Out. Um, but, like, fucking hell, the, the quality of drummers up, up your way is ridiculous. I, I don't understand it. Down south, like, we can't fucking find a drummer for love nor money, really. That's, that's really? A, big, it's a big problem with a lot of bands. Yeah, it is. It is fairly hard. That's how I end up in bands. Like, <laughs> 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 you know what? I think it's the same up here. I think you can. I think you can get guitars and bass and stuff. Bass is usually alright, fine, but vocals and yeah, yeah, yeah. probably the hardest thing you can get. To be fair, I think most of the drummers I know from up north are in like three or four bands. Mm. Three <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I guess I guess it's probably as a thing here too. <laughs> To yeah. an extent. I mean, a uh, big shout out to Stuart as well. Does he do uh, yourself and is it you, Daryl, that work together mo mainly or? <laughs> yeah, that's all album it was, yeah. Okay. That's the way it tracks back. The, we've been doing that for about 10 years. Wow. From Brooks Bond. Bond. don't know, it's just the connection there. It's very easy. He'll read a riff and <laughs> we'll speak about it on the phone. You just sit there and we'll, we'll have it, you know, it just comes together very quickly. Mm. Natural is the word. Yeah. It all um, starts with Stuart. Everything does. To be honest with you, yeah, because yeah, it's it's just interesting. Um, another band that he have played with, I think it was as you said, was it before the interview started? It was Neon Empire. Yes, yeah, yeah. We played with them in Dublin uh, about a month ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they yeah. were they were Josh did their album as well or EP. He did indeed, yeah. yeah. Did he actually? He did. He was talking about it even the run, yeah. Mm. And they're another band as well. Would would have clean vo vocals and harsh vocals. Yeah. yeah. They're great they're bands. Sexy, they're they're really very, good very good. And yeah. lovely, lovely people as well. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. yeah they seem absolutely dead on. Yeah. Yeah. And who else was on that gig with you that night? Dream Awake and Pain and Vain. Pain and Vain. Okay. And that was uh, down in Dublin, yeah? Yeah. Uh, Fibbers. Fibbers. yeah. Fibbers. How did you get on the there? Beer. Pardon? How did you get on there? Good. Oh, it was brilliant. Yeah, it was our first show. Like, so. 
we kind of had uh, weren't really sure what to expect from it, but Spac- it was good. Especially with being pushed back earlier, but there was still um, a good crowd on. So yeah, it was very good. We enjoyed ourselves. Now. Yeah, regardless of the new restrictions that were brought in the night before, <laughs> where we had to finish a lot earlier, uh, <laughs> it was still good. Yeah, mm. that was just good. Yeah, I think fair play to Fibbers for doing it that way as well, rather than yeah, because uh, there's even places in Cork that gigs were actually just chopped. They like, look, look, we can't have you and a DJ later, so they've actually it's like showing what they give a shit about more, and it's yeah, the yeah. DJ later on. Whereas Fibbers are like, look, we're just going to do everything earlier because there's so many bookers, you can't be like, do you know what? You can make money today, but you can't. Do you know? Yeah. So if I just think fair play to them for for going for for doing that, like, because other places are just kind of cutting yeah, the we, bands and then well, putting a DJ on. Like, it reminded me of the lame like gigs are like that in there on a Saturday. Have been for years. It's like five to nine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I saw that already. Yeah, a lot of them have yeah, like, the five o'clock like starts. I was watching Andy's vlog actually. Shout out to Andy from the Crawling. They mm. played the limelight there. It was a. Uh, I'd love to. Uh, it's one venue I haven't been in yet. It looks class, like. It is yeah, cool, it's man. Great. It's a it's a good place. It's a really big place. So is it is, is um, size wise? How does it compare to Voodoo? Uh, way different, isn't it? It's a completely different like it's got a layout. Bar floor in the middle, and then two lift up trays, haven't you? So you yeah. probably fit a few more people on it. All right, so okay, just... so it's slightly bigger, yeah. Yeah, there's two venues. So there's like three bars can join. So, but I think it's lame like two is where they'll have the gigs. And most of like, yeah. like local gigs, I guess. Any yeah. of the bigger bars? Yeah, yeah. 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 Have you played there, Ev? Have you? No, no, we haven't played in limelight. Um, yeah, it kind of reminds me yeah. of the Dali in Cork. Yeah, in a way, I guess I'd say Dali would have been bigger. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, just kind of just the layout there with the bar. Everything seemed to move the voodoo, really. Yeah, it seems it. to be going that way more now. And now the voodoo more nowadays, you know. And speak easy, I guess, as well. Yeah, it's right. Mm. Yeah, Jesus Christ, they're spoiled for choice, aren't they? For fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking pricks. Yeah, shower <laughs> guns. That's all you are. We hate you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, we have to drive four and a half hours up to, up to Belfast every time. And then drive home hungover. <laughs> no. <laughs> Nothing works actually. Yeah. Grimly holding on to the steering wheel with yeah. Ken's teak on. It was worth it. It was worth it. And then <laughs> holding on to Richie at the same time. Being like... <laughs> I'm going to be back up anyway, please God, um, uh, to see Metal to the Masses. Are, are you actually, can you saying about Metal to the Masses? Are you on? <laughs> we're going to be playing it. Yeah, we're on it. Nice one. Okay, good. Is that official yet or? And uh, I put it through, but I don't think there's been any announcements. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, right. yeah, man, that'd be a great one to get up there. You can jump in if you want, man. As long as we fucking will, boy. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Absolutely. So um, let's get back to the album. Uh, the uh, album title, Decay. I mean, worn out at waste. You have Decay. Um, is there a team <laughs> running through it? Between the two bands, yeah. <laughs> Just copy it, I, I work in the yeah, environmental yeah, department. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I deal with both decay and waste. I work in an environmental department, so yeah. Go <laughs> <laughs> on, tell us what's the story behind the title. Uh, well, it kind of just it's it's a weird one. The title for me because like one of the first songs we wrote was decay, and okay. I kind of from there decided that I just wanted to call the album decay. I didn't necessarily have like thematically like a thing to do with that title, but okay. everything else I wrote about tended to be like it's, it deals with like mental health and stuff like that, and just like and like worldwide problems and stuff. Like so, like Karoshi, like um, Karoshi in particular is about like Karoshi is a thing in Japan where people basically they're working like crazy, crazy hours. And they literally like just sort of drop Drop dead from overworking. And it's literally, it's an epidemic there. And it's literally caught as a name, Hiroshi. So it's about that. that. So it's just about different type, like some bad shit going on, I guess. (laughs) 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 I'm bad at explaining things sometimes, but yeah. No, no, that's good, man. I mean, we'll do a quick run through uh, a few of the songs. Um, So Eulogy 
the opener that you all heard there, um, absolutely one of the, one of the tracks of the album for me, uh, directed by Kyle Kobe. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. I was going to ask that. you, did that video? It's excellent. Yeah, um, Kyle. Um, uh, uh, how long do you know how long Kyle's been doing it for? I'm not too sure. A couple of years, maybe. maybe a couple more. of years, but he's very talented and he's very driven. <laughs> Was um, not in Canada as well? So yeah, he was doing like, in Canada. He films like for he films a lot of like rap videos and stuff. Cool. So he really knows what he's doing. Like, um, and we just sort of filmed it in the summer there. Like at the time, I was living in London for six months, so I like flew over from London to shoot the video, and we hired out the roof of UBS Center in the center of Belfast. Where did you hire out? Pardon? What was the name of the building? Uh, the UBS Center. It's like a music center kind of okay. place. But they have okay. gigs and stuff sometimes. Cool. But um, there's like loads of bars down like the side streets. And yeah. we were playing on uh, like a Sunday during the day. So like it was incredibly loud. And there was like groups of like girls and stuff down, like oh, down, yeah. like we're ruining their day drinking, you know? Uh, <laughs> so like, proper, uh, this proper this fucking uh, Beatles moment. Like. I was just going to say, I'm, I'm, yeah, I yeah. just I'm finished the three episodes on Disney about the Beatles playing on the roof, man. And yeah, <laughs> it's just, just ridiculous the lads playing on the Archives roof. Archives on the roof, roof. like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was like that, but more of a racket, I it was guess. Fucking more of day, too. It was, yeah, it was a scorch. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and thank God you weren't fucking miming, man. That's great to hear that you played it live, you know. Uh, yeah. You have to, you can't get away with it. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen plenty of fucking bands that have, you know. Well, they've tried to get away with it and it looks absolutely shit. I'm <laughs> not going to name, <laughs> but... Uh... <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a great video as well. Um, what was the reception like for that track? I mean, it's your second single. Um, are you aware of... How many streams, how many people are viewing it, or are you watching all that stuff? Well, I think it, I know, it's been out, what, two weeks, three, three weeks? weeks or something now. Two, three weeks, it's been out now. Yeah. Uh, it's it's grown quite quickly, like, on YouTube and stuff. Um, 3,000 plus on each. 3,000 plus views, and, like, we haven't really put any promotion into that. So like, far, yeah. So it's been quite like, well-received. Mm. Yeah, we have a PR campaign ongoing, obviously, to push the album. So, we're just, yeah, it's strapping free magazines and stuff like that, isn't it? So, yeah. more word of mouth that way yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Alex Baker as well. For yeah, yeah, yeah. He liked yeah. it. Like, what, yeah, he, he, he seems to really like that song, which is good. He's been playing it quite a lot. He's played it a few times in a row, the next few weeks in a row. That wasn't that one. It's a bit overwhelming for me, like, to be honest. Yeah, you um, never did that, do you? So, uh, yeah, it was good. And uh, the next track then is Blueprints. Um, tell us a small bit about that. Uh, Blueprints is basically about like the concept of like nature or nurture. Like, say for example, you take like a serial killer or something. Is it their upbringing or the way they've been treated, growing up or their, throughout their life that's caused them to be that way? Or are they born with fat in their DNA kind of thing? Yeah, it's like that. What's it? Something in the carrot. What's that? Stick the, in the carrot. Stick in the carrot, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like how you're raised that if you're given a, a kid a stick, will he end up being aggressive? And if you're given a, a kid like a carrot, is he going to end up to be... Bugs Bunny. Bugs exactly. Bunny, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, then the title track, The K, you've um, explained that. Uh, Unity, it's a great track, number four. Unity. Um, Unity basically was, it kind of deals with a couple of things, but primarily it was like around the time um, like Israel and stuff was going crazy, like oh, Palestine. Yeah. Uh, um, and you're seeing obviously on the news at the time about like Syrian refugees and stuff and people rejecting them. So I basically mm. kind of wrote it around that. Like, it's kind of like, there's parts of the song that are from the, like, perspective of the person in that situation mm. who's born into it, can't, can't help it, and other parts of it are just kind of like... Is that one of the newer songs, lads, or was that the be. first five? One of the, the later ones we wrote. Track later. Yeah. yeah. Recording, yeah. One of the last okay. few. We had recorded quite a few when I was writing the lyrics, I think, so, yeah. I think I riff had that riff quite a while, though. We had one riff in the middle of it, yeah. I think, for a long time. And then we just... Uh. Yeah, built it around the bend, shoehorn yeah. it in like yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the fifth track, Minefield, again, uh, great video. Um, Dr. Productions, tell us about these lads. 
That's, That's Josh Robinson. Josh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Fuck Christ. sake. <laughs> we, we, we just literally, we just done that. And we're like, we need to get this fucking out there. And Josh yeah. was like, let's do a video. I'll, he was just like, I'll do a video. I'll do it. We're like, That's, yeah, let's go and fucking smash it out and get it out there. And we didn't even drop it for like six months anyway. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think Fair we were to him, yeah. February, didn't we? Oh yeah, it was ages yeah. ago we did it. Yeah. <laughs> And was that the obvious single, the opening single for you? Yeah, you, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, 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 class, yeah. Um, I have, I have the lyrics here now. Why do I always feel like it's my last day on earth? Why does it, I always fail to lift this course? Um, go into that there a bit, Adam. Right. Uh, well, basically, that is just like, like depression, just okay. written down. Pretty much, and like, I guess at the time I wrote that, to be brutally honest, it I was kind of like dealing with things by like maybe abusing substances and drinking too much, that kind of thing. Um, so it was kind of like that self-destructive path where like you don't really care, but kind of like your own safety and stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. So like, um. You, like you feel like it might actually be your last day because you're like you don't really care anyway, you know. Yeah. I guess to, to not to not bring too much of a downer on shit. No, no, it was a long no, time ago no. I wrote it, but yeah, yeah, um, you've you've come through okay. the other side of it anyway, which is yeah, the most course, important. Man. Cool. Yeah, Xander with, beer, like. Xander with Xander um, <laughs> with <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That means he's conquered it. Evan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for anyone listening to the audio version I have a sniffly nose <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well like um, you respect that as well we see that with Xander with Evans band born out as well he's fucking brutally honest at times and you know there's yeah. no hidden agenda with the lyrics it's, it's straight down the middle isn't it yeah there's a certain level of crypticism that um, I think he's just not bothered with as yeah. in this is what it is you know you can take your meaning from it but there's something a bit more relatable in that sense rather than trying to have too much in-depth lyrics that no one will ever figure it out anyway but yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. just straight to the point yeah uh track six holding on daryl what are your memories of that one Double kick at the start of it. That's what I asked. Will it go on? Cramps. <laughs> uh, that's, that was like the second song we ever wrote. Yeah, that was that was a long time ago we wrote that one. Though. Yeah, mm. that, uh, yeah, it was an early one that turned out a bit better than what I think we thought it would, basically. Yeah. yeah. And uh, do you play that song live? Yeah. Yeah, we played the, the, the album launch. We played every song bar Karoshi, just two to ten. Oh wow! Okay, cool, nice. Fair play. That's a move. Um, Parma, awesome. <laughs> Parma violence. Go ahead. Right, Parma violence. Uh, it was actually the last song we recorded. Um, I recorded it um, literally the day I was moving to London, pretty much. So it's kind of it's a good memory for me that way because I literally went to the studio, banged it out, and then drove got on the boat and literally <laughs> left the country. So it's kind of like a funny memory <laughs> for me, finishing the album on the day I move, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's it's a weird one, right? Because it's the stupidest theme of the whole album, but it's kind of like was the funnest to write. Um, basically, it's about, like, I was drinking, like, a Parma Violet uh, cider, right? <laughs> I never even the, heard of this. Kind of it, right? <laughs> And randomly, I seen the word and read, and read it as Parma violence. <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I might have been, I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure. But then I was like, I asked a lot of my friends and stuff. I was like, "That's a cool word. What do you think that means? Like, what, what, what would you? What does that make you think of?" And I was with my friend Kev one day. Uh, I think we we're on the beach actually, and we were having like smoke and stuff, and. Um, I asked him the same question, you know, what, what do you think that is? And he said it sounds like kind of like a graphic novel kind of film about a fashion designer <laughs> who hates everybody else in the industry and he's a serial killer and he kills them all. Can I have some that, of that's your next video? That's your next video, that's your next video is sorted. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's literally what it's about. I just wrote it like it was a movie. But yeah, it's ridiculous. But yeah. Fucking hell. 
Uh, I'd watch that. I'd fucking watch that, like hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. Again, again, I have to put in the Beatle fucking analogy there of uh, Paul McCartney. He's made. Um, we're sitting in some fucking restaurant or something, and Paul McCartney. What was it? He goes to Paul or something like pasta, salt and pepper. And Paul McCartney thought he said pasta, Sergeant Pepper. And he went, <laughs> oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah. <laughs> That's the cool thing, Sergeant Pepper. And he said it to a few people. They all went, oh, sounds like an interesting cloak. So Parma violence, man. Her, remember where you heard it first. I thought it was about a cheese. <laughs> Violent cheese. Violent diarrhea from a cheese, like. <laughs> <laughs> or if you put a H in front, it answer. could have been pharma violence. Pharma violence, yeah. Really interesting as well, but I know. Okay, Map Maker, I'm really interested in this one. Um, I really like that track as well. Ooh. Yeah, keep your eyes peeled for that one. Say no more. <laughs> uh, I think, yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Um, Map Maker, lyrically, um, I, I was reading a book at the time when we were writing the album, and it was a book about this guy. Uh, Percy Fawcett, I think there's like a film and stuff about him. But he's a guy back in, I think, like the early 20s, 30s maybe, who was like an explorer. Like he was essentially a map maker. Like he was mapping territories of places where people had never been. And he basically went to like the Amazon in search of a city that people he had heard allegedly had existed, this kind of utopia um, where there's like all this gold and everything. Right, and he went there. He's a guy from England. Like, he went there um, in search of it, and he nobody ever knew, knew knew what happened to him. He basically went missing. To this day, they don't know what happened to him. He went in the band there, never come home. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just wrote it as if it was like his thoughts and feelings mm -hmm. while he's going through that, and like maybe feeling guilty about the fact that he's leaving his family behind, and he's going and is it selfish of him to do this um, and go out and seek that out and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I, I admire that man. Isn't it cool Ed, that they go off on those tangents as well, lyrically wise? Yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking about your man, like because if he was out kind of making maps, he's obviously in a place that no one knows where it is because yeah. he hasn't made a map about it yet. So he's yeah. fucked. Like, <laughs> yeah. I think a tribe might have got him in the end, but yeah. Uh, oh, okay, so we're gonna play uh, my favorite track of the album. There's two or three standout <laughs> ones, but this for me. Is uh, the main one? Uh, it's Karoshi. 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 My apologies. <laughs> My 51 year old ailing neck, but I don't give a fuck. That's that's definitely holding on to the speakers for that. That's the one that we put him under now, watch. Yeah, it will be. It'll fuck me up, man. I thought it was, I thought I was going to be heading to hospital after Elder Druid, but uh, no, I, I'm gonna, I, I will be losing the plot for that, man. <laughs> Dale, how do you approach a song like that as a drummer? 
How do I approach a song like that as a drummer? Yeah. How do I approach any song as a drummer? Fuck, I don't know. It's literally, best way of putting it, Stuart just gives me something and you hear it in your head before you even mm-hmm. get something. That's, okay. That was exactly the same that song. I didn't see any other way to go with that song for continual double kicks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got it all going there, you know. It was actually probably one of the easier ones, the right drum ways probably, to be honest with you. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> There's, you know, there's a lot of running riffs and patterns like so, and then standard breakdowns. So. Yeah. Like, you, know, your feet, you always get your feet to follow the, the breakdowns of the guitar, and then you're happy. Yeah. Evan, I'm gonna any, just, any just gonna throw that with towards your you. <laughs> <laughs> Evan, I'm gonna throw that towards you. You've listened to that track, man. I mean, would you approach it any differently, or? That's interesting. Um, well, I mean, every drummer is gonna play things differently, but yeah. there's definitely things that I can see exactly what you mean by like, well, that's what you have. That's exactly what should be played. Like, there's some matched kind of open chugs and stuff that it's you. You're giving it that that boost behind everything. Like, yeah, you, it would you start, sound weird if you didn't match it. Like, you know, you start, you just start there, and then once you get it down, you start fucking firing ideas and with toms and snares and a few old yeah, time yeah. and it just starts pacing itself. Once together. you have that initial, the bass yeah. kind of the groove down with your feet, then work away. I think it's. Yeah. With songs like that, it would be a lot of people's hands that would change rather than people's feet, you know? Yeah, that's I mean, their, those match kicks been, are essential, like. I've always done more feet work. I don't know about yourself, like. It's just been done, huh? Yeah, yeah. Just a thing, just, like. But. I'm giving them a forum here to fucking go off on tangents, and they're very <laughs> diplomatic, Adam. For fuck's sake. That's a drumming <laughs> podcast, like. Because <laughs> we're sound, like. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, you said that it was about uh, the Japanese style of uh, the way they make them work and stuff like that. Yeah. Again, um, approaching that uh, from a vocalist side and yourself and Stuart, did you have much of a discussion in relation to how it was going to come across that song in particular? Shared vocally Lyrical, wise? Or in terms of what I should be doing? Yeah. Um, I don't think we did necessarily. Like, I kind of just go for it. Um, mm. I would never really figure anything out prior because a, a lot of the songs, when we were recording them, like, the like apart from the bar, f- the four, the first four or five, yeah. the instrumentals were laid down and then I sort of come in with the vocals. So when I was recording them, it was almost like the first time they were hearing them, you know? Mm. Um, there was the, I can't remember if there was specifically in Croce, but there was definitely on the album, there was points where, like, the guys would, like, through the window kind of like suggest oh why don't you try this and like you know like different kind of patterns and stuff to break it up you know but um yeah there's definitely a bit of back and forward suggestions all around i think with us when we're recording it's very messy the way we piece it together when you say that loud doesn't it (laughs) (laughs) but it comes across like there's such a great flow in it yes that's the that's what i'm getting at Mm. you know i mean fuck it there's no fat in this at all like jesus as I said, for, for a debut album, it's ridiculously so tight. Like, and it's don't unreal. Fight into any it's of the so good. Yeah. That bands do, you know, fucking right. excess fucking riffs or, you know, excess solos. and no, None of that bullshit, man. Uh, the last track, uh, Fontaine Road, an obvious ender? I think so, yeah. I think it was. It was a seven, six or seven song recorded, but yeah. that tight row just screamed album member. Yeah, it's <laughs> the solo, really, like, isn't it? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Something we've never done as a band on any other project, actually. Yeah. A, sort of pushed Stuart. It's like, you need to put a fucking solo on that album, man. <laughs> did, yeah, so. no, no pressure, like. <laughs> yeah. As well, for an album that, like, throughout a lot of it is quite, like, uh, pissed off and, like, depressed and angry and shit. Hmm. For, for the end in that uplifting way I think it's quite good to, you know it seemed obvious to us to do it that way I, I think that song's probably thinking about it it sort of gives off what we try to do like, we like to be happy but there's a even though that song's very happy it, it's very light as well yeah. in a way that makes sense you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and is it um, a precursor of what could come further down the line an acoustic album <laughs> I don't think so I don't think we're going to get we're going to go much lighter uh, no I don't yeah. think at the minute, it's just it's just acknowledging that side of you and park it then for a while, is it? Yeah, but we're starting to make work on new stuff at the moment. It's it's fucking beefy, like so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we'll see how that filters in. Yeah, it's it's just um, there's a lot of avenues you could kind of explore 
with your sound. Um, it's interesting. The title, uh, the, Adam, is that is that a place in Belfast or somewhere? Or it's somewhere? it's a place in London, actually. Yeah. Was oh, it okay? Yeah, uh, it's basically. Um, it was actually. It's like a road in London. In whereabouts? Is it London? It's near like Seven Sisters kind of area. Like oh fuck top. it, okay, yeah, by the tube station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of like it's an area where there's lots of um, like warehouses. And people live in the warehouses, like they're refurbed and stuff, obviously. So like okay. people like rent out rooms or whatever in it. Mm. But I was going to get a big warehouse party in there <laughs> in my, my friend's <laughs> brother's warehouse. Love um, it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I was I was at this crazy party and it was like a good experience. And I met my girlfriend there at this party. So yeah, see, it's basically the, no, I was get to the like, fucking big the details of you see. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly three years. That's the only, that thing shit, you want, the only thing you wanted to know it if you had a girlfriend. This whole thing was a, a ruse yeah. just to find out if you had a girlfriend or yeah. not. Right, well, thanks a million. That's it anyway. Yeah, all, the best, <laughs> right. sure. all the best. Yeah, yeah. I thought you had a good one there, Richie. No, you missed your chance. I told you I'd find out though, didn't I? Mm. Every yeah. fucking day. Yeah. <laughs> um, one other thing that's it's not bugging me, but like it's it it's it doesn't help that you're hard to find the name archives. There's fucking three or four bands yeah. out there. Can you explain that as in, in the tag form? Is that what you mean? When you go searching for Bandcamp okay. or Spotify, there's a fucking shitload come up. Need an hour. We okay. actually found it. If you do it in capitals, they come up straight away. Well, that's the way. It, that's actually the way we spell it. It is in black mm. capital. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, no, I've just heard a few people saying they've tried to tag it on Facebook and it's been hard to find. So we're like, right, yeah. we need to put that right. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and how did you settle on that name? How did we get the name? Yeah. Great story. This is actually a good story. And I'm going to retire the after this, lads. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> it's better be good now. <laughs> we were, what do you call it? We had a song from the last project. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. We were looking at the go down, go down that road with that vibe, weren't we? Yeah. Uh, but Josh had the song. He had the instrumental. Also. So we asked him for it, and he said he couldn't find it. He'd have to look in his archives. He said it was lost <laughs> in the archives. Oh, that's very good. And that's, that's very, very good. good. Yeah. Where came from? We yeah. thought it was cool. We went from there. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. He's all over the stand, didn't he? Yeah. 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 Fucking right. Getting the name's hard, though. It like, is. And that's the hardest the part of a yeah. fucking band is to get something that's catchy and also that there's no other fucking cons using it. But yeah, sure, it's, that's like so hard. Uh, Arcades like yeah, it. definitely. <laughs> like worn out. There's a cabaret band in America, isn't it? And there's oh, a few. Really? I think so. Yeah, there's there's a lot of albums. Um, They're quite good, actually. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's a few bands that have like broken up from years ago that were called. Uh, Worn out, but until someone comes up and starts threatening fucking money, yeah, it couldn't be ours. Okay. I really couldn't give a fuck to be honest. Like, yeah, yeah just right, man. Mm. Yeah, it's not like we came out with the name of the Beatles, like so. I think we'll be all keep, right. We keep referencing for the whole fucking <laughs> yeah, show, yeah. man, for the crack. Um, merchandising. Who did your logo first of all? And go. The logo was um, Kieran. Kieran Notion, uh, Spearhead Media. Yeah, uh, legend. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the vocalist from Hollow Truth back in the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out Kieran, absolute legend. He yeah, loves absolute his craft. legend. Um, he's a YouTube channel where he does tutorials and stuff. About yeah, YouTube. they're great. Yeah, yeah. They're really, really. I don't, good. I don't really, do, I don't do any graphic design or anything, but they're it, fun like, to watch. I, I watch that just because, yeah. like, it's entertaining, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shout out Kieran. Uh, merch, um, merch. Um, uh, well, we have, we have, we don't, we, we're kind of uh, still, we have, we don't have loads of merch out or anything, okay. but we do have a T-shirt design that I think we're going to start um, okay. pump, pumping out online. That was done by Kier. Kier, <laughs> mainfield design. Yeah, it's okay. on the paint the spot effect. It's on the single picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nice one. And yeah. uh, you're you're staying digital for the moment. Or you have any plans for releasing any physical copies of anything? We were talking the other week about it, like, um, I guess, like, at shows and stuff, we definitely will need to have more physical copies. Yeah. We, I, we weren't, we weren't sure, and yeah. then people come up and ask us at both shows, yeah. so we're like, yeah, we're going to have to get some. Yeah. I'd <laughs> love to have vinyl. 
just because I, I love vinyl, you know? Oh, no. Um, oh, man. Oh, my God. Here we go again. Another fucking rabbit hole of vinyl. Yeah. <sighs> Deep breaths. Deep breaths. Richard. I want to do it just to have, have one myself, you know? Every <laughs> band wants to do it to have one themselves, but it's a fucking nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. just because it takes so long to get it's, that's it that, that's the only problem I have with it like it's just it's so like there's not enough vinyl plants out in the fucking world at the moment basically well it's the fucking the fact that we're in a um, a global pandemic is what really kind of fucked it mm. like there's loads of I think the whole Adele thing was blown out of proportion it's not actually just Adele that's taken up every single thing. Um, what was that, man? I missed that. And it's been referenced. Oh, basically, a few times. she booked up a load of vinyl plants to get half a million. The st- there was truth to it, but it was nowhere near what everyone thinks it is. Yeah. There's also like a so, shortage of the lacquer that you need to make vinyls because of a place in Japan that does it specifically. <laughs> so, Adele or no Adele, like it, there's going to be a backlog regardless. And then you can only have a certain amount of people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah finals are class just just get them like fucking. you climbed the mountain Evan with it man you, you got it and um, we did it months and months before people I'm, even I'm, knew I'm, that we'd done anything I'm, like yeah and what I love about that is the fact that Worn Out Now can go to play a show and have their vinyl as merch which is class like yeah, yeah. And that, yeah, that will wait. probably be very interesting to see how much how many copies shift in relation to T-shirts and vinyl? Because you're in the position to do that now because you have a shitload of vinyl. So yeah, that, yeah. that'd be very interesting to see. I'm not giving you a fucking stats if that's what you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> How much is in your bank account right now? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I have an autographed, worn out fucking vinyl, so I'm, I'm, I'm just happy, man. I'm, I'm, I'm in a good place. <laughs> It's not going to be worth anything, like, if you're planning on retiring on that. <laughs> yeah, well, trying to translate Never. your fucking autographs will be uh, fun anyway for any <laughs> authentic, authentic of autographs. First time ever no one made fun of mine, they all just looked at Xander's. I was like, that was a genuine moment for me, and I loved it. <laughs> it's cool, wasn't it? Um, so, plan-wise, 2022, lads, I would love to see hit the UK shores with that album um that's what we want to do we're in the yeah we're trying to get that but we're just pushing for that at the moment yeah really. we have a lot of stuff organized like in that like we haven't announced or anything okay that's fair uh, enough yeah we'll be dropping another video at the start of the year yeah um yeah we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll have real. 10 plans to play over in the uk like the mainland or whatever like next year but you have with to. restrictions and stuff it's hard to know what's going to happen you know um yeah, you were trying to piece something together in scotland you know yeah we've, we've basically kind of got something going in scotland potentially but, but uh, it wouldn't matter when we'll, we'll see, we'll see <laughs> what, what bojo says you know yeah i mean scotland oh, is you know an obvious, who that's with <laughs> Scot- yeah. scotland's an obvious choice man i could probably guess myself as well but uh <laughs> scotland is an obvious choice straight away yeah yeah, yeah. Thick bands over there as well, like seen yeah. over there. And you like, and you'd have fucking so much fun over in Glasgow and Edinburgh, man. Oh, yeah. Man. So and it's only a short fucking jaunt across, like so. Makes sense. Um, yeah. Have you got? Is there anybody sniffing around management wise, PR wise, with you at the moment? Yeah, we've uh, we're working with. Um, we have two separate ones at the minute. Um, with, P- with a PR guy and with a manager. We're, okay. we're using sound PR and we've just sort of started working with UAC management just to try and just try and push it on a bit more basically at the moment yeah fair play to you yeah you deserves know, it man it's good to social hear social presence is going to be the way to push it on with this pandemic shit so yeah. that's the way we're going at the moment until we can get more shows basically. Yeah. so hopefully we can get our UK tour sort of through this as well yeah. you know <laughs> yeah. absolutely lads yeah 100% yeah yeah um, like you, the man below me here, um, for maybe oh, Evan is fucking so annoying. Uh, like Cork was so fucking good for gigs, um, before pandemic hit. It really was, man. You'd have, you'd have, we'd have you down at this stage, literally. Um, but we've nothing at the moment, zero fucking nada. Yeah, so. I was actually, I've already been onto the lads about stuff like that. All right. Yeah, um, so, so it's, it's just, it's just venues it, more it than anything happen. else. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, exactly. it's never, when when more than if. Yeah. yeah. So I the won't. likelihood is you'll see us up in Belfast at your gig rather than us down in Cork bringing a shitload of people to watch you. So that's the reality yeah. at the moment. We were meant to be doing what he caught the album launch in February, weren't we, next month? But I think that's all scrapped as well. Yeah, we're supposed <laughs> to uh, have another headline in Dublin. Wow, uh, oh Jesus, okay. Have you done an album launch yet then? No. We've done yeah. one, yeah, but we're going to do kind of like a down south thing as well, you know? Nice. Just album launch if we do a few weeks ago. So the plan was to go down to Dublin, obviously next, but I think it make it push back. It could be April now, but it's Yeah, it's looking like April at the moment. Okay. Mm. And fuck it, I'd rather an all night out in. Belfast, Dave. What would you think? Yeah. Of I'll, I'll go and listen to someone fart through a walkie talkie in Azerbaijan. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'm, I'm, all, I'm all in. Like. Now, I've been to Belfast, done that fucking a zillion times. Belfast, or sorry, Dublin, but Belfast now. Nah, we, we go the extra hour and a half on the motorway. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah fuck it. Okay, Hometown yes. gig is always better, man. You, you can only just see Elder Drew there in the voodoo, man. That was fucking awesome, man. Yeah, right on. Yeah. Okay, lads, listen. Absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks again, Adam and Darren. Sure. Adam? A uh, big shout out to Stuart, Samuel and Paul as well of the band. And uh, one to watch in 2022, uh, Archives. Thanks, lads. Thanks for having us. Yeah. yeah.